Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to save your aliases, so let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, just a quick thing that you should probably do, and that is back up your bash RC file, just in case you make any mistakes. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you're in your home folder, so PWD, and you can see that I'm in my home folder, and you want to make a copy of dot bash RC, and we're going to copy that to, let's just leave it hidden, so dot bash rc.backup and just hit enter. So if you do make a mistake and totally wipe out your bash rc file, you've always got a backup. Okay, if you wanna find out a little bit more about aliases, you can check out the previous video that I did on aliases and there'll be a link in the description and an annotation on the screen now. But let's just start off this tutorial by listing our aliases. So if we just type in alias, you can see a list of the current aliases that we have. Now these aliases are stored in my bashrc file, which is in my home directory. So let's just use less to have a look at that. So less tilde forward slash dot bashrc. And there's a dot there because it's a hidden file. And this is it. So if we just have a look for aliases, so alias, sorry. You can see that these are the aliases that were listed apart from these which are commented out. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, uh, we come to this paragraph over here, which says that you may want to put all of your additions in a separate file, like dot bash underscore aliases. And then you get to this line here that says you can check out these docs for some more information. Um, these don't actually exist, so you can basically ignore that. But if we come down to this if statement over here, you can see that it's searching for this bash aliases file. And if it exists, it will then load it. So let's just quit out of less and let's just ls-la because we're going to look for a hidden file and let's just pipe that into grep and what we were looking for was dot bash underscore aliases. So let's just see if it exists. And as you can see, it doesn't exist. So we need to create that. Now, when you create this, make sure that you're in your home directory. So as you can see, I am in my home directory. So I'm just going to clear the screen and use touch to create that. So touch dot bash underscore aliases and make sure that's all spelt correctly. Otherwise our bash RC file will not load this and just hit enter. And we now have a bash underscore aliases file. Now there are a couple of ways that we can get our aliases into this file. And the first of which is you can just use a text editor. So I'm going to use Vi and let's just edit this. So bash underscore aliases. And let's just add an alias here that's really simple. So what we need to do is just type in alias and the name of our alias. So let's call it hello. And that's going to equal, let's just get it to echo out hello world. So echo hello world. And let's just save that. And let's try and run that. So hello. And as you can see, we didn't get the output that we were expecting. Now, this is because our bash RC file is actually loaded when we launch our terminal. So what we need to do is get our bash RC file to reload, which will then in turn reload our bash aliases file. Or we could actually just reload our bash aliases file. You can do it in many ways. So the first way that we can do this is we can close our terminal and reopen it and that will reload our bash RC file. The second way that we can do this is we can type in bash and that will basically have the same effect as closing your terminal window and reopening it. Now the third way is we can actually run our bash RC file manually. So if we just type in dot space tilde forward slash and the tilde is there because we're basically saying this is in our home directory. So you can just use a tilde as shorthand instead of typing in a full path. And we want to load our dot bash RC. And if we hit enter, that will reload that. So if we type in hello now, we get the output we were expecting, which is hello world. So our alias has been loaded. And let's just create another alias so we can see if loading our bash aliases file directly works. So let's just reopen by. And let's just edit this alias. So instead of it printing out hello world, it will just print out world. So let's just delete that and let's save that. 
And to reload our bash aliases file directly, we can just type in dot space tilde forward slash bash underscore aliases and hit enter. And as you can see, I actually missed out the dot because it's a hidden file. So there we go, dot bash aliases and hit enter. So now if we type in hello, we should just get world come out, which we do. So that's one way that you can edit your bash aliases file. And that's four ways that you can actually get your changes to take effect. Now, another way that we can get our aliases into our bash aliases file is to echo them in. So I'm just going to type in echo and open up two double quotes. And inside that, I'm going to type in our alias. So alias, and let's call this one foo. And that's going to equal, let's just get it to echo out bar. And what we need to do is we need to redirect and append that output to our tilde forward slash dot bash underscore aliases file. So what that's basically going to do is we're going to echo this out here. So this is our alias and we're redirecting and appending the output into our bash aliases file. So if we hit enter now, and if we just reload our aliases file, so I'm just going to use bash to do that. And we now type in foo, you can see that our alias works. We could also use cat to put aliases into our bash aliases file. So if we just type in cat and then two greater than signs and the name of the file, which is dot bash underscore aliases, we can now type in our alias. So let's create another alias and let's call it ping. So alias, we're going to call it ping. And what that's going to do is that's going to equal, let's get it to echo out pong and hit enter and then just control D to finish that. And now we can just type in bash to reload our bash aliases file. And now if we type in ping, we get the output that we were expecting, which is pong. Now with the cat and the echo method, make sure that you use two greater than signs, because if you only use one, what will happen is you would redirect the output, but you will then, instead of appending to the file, you will basically write over everything in your aliases file. So what you'll be left with is the alias that you're setting and nothing else. So all of your previous aliases will be destroyed. Now, hopefully you're seeing the advantages to actually using a separate aliases file, because if you used any of these methods and you kind of got them wrong, but you were storing your aliases in your bash RC file, you will end up overwriting everything in your bash RC file, which would be a bad thing. Now there's a fourth method that we can use to get our aliases into our bash aliases file. And this will only work if you are storing your aliases in your bash aliases file and not your bash RC file. So what I'm going to do is just clear the screen and just type in aliases. So alias, sorry. And you can see we have a list of our aliases. Now what I'm going to do is create a new alias. So alias, and I'm going to call it tennis. And that's going to equal, let's just get that to echo out ball and store that. So now if I clear the screen and list our aliases, you can see that our new alias is here, but it is not stored in our bash aliases file. Now to get it into our bash underscore aliases file, we could actually redirect this output. So if we just type in alias and then a single greater than sign, and we type in the name of the file we want to redirect this to. So let's just use the tilde forward slash dot bash underscore aliases and hit enter. If we now just use less to view that, so less and let's just use tilde forward slash dot bash underscore aliases. And as you can see, our tennis alias is in there. But we've also got the aliases that we're in our bash RC file. Now this isn't really much of a problem as there's only a few of them and it's not going to break anything loading them twice. So what, what effectively will happen is our bash RC file will load, these aliases will be loaded, and then our bash RC file will load the bash aliases file, which will then load them again. So 
it's a little bit wasteful but it's not really a big problem if you really want to clean it up you can take your aliases from your bash rc file and just move them into your aliases file but there's no real reason to do that as it's not really going to cause any problems so i would just leave them there so let's just test out that alias so tennis and it prints out ball so there you go that's a couple of ways to save your aliases I hope you found it useful. If you did, please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And you can also follow Linux Leech on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. So thanks for watching and goodbye.